Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. We are here in Chicago Lab Day 2020 with Mr. Bill Atkins, a key opinion leader and advisor for Dentsply Serona. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We appreciate you being generous with your time and sitting down with us and sharing with the Dental Today Nation. So, we're at the end of the show. How's the show been so far? Um, it's been really good. Uh, I've been busy up in the Dent Supply Serona booth. We've been able to get out and uh, down to the showroom and, and see what we need to see. It's an extremely busy show this year. Extremely busy. So probably the busiest I've seen. Wow, and you've been really busy traveling as well. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of traveling. Doing, doing a lot of stops for Dent Supply Serona. When in the world do you get to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> well, between my wife and I, because she travels quite a bit too for her job, it, sometimes it's a... Uh, you know, it's hard. We got the whole month month of March together, but after that, she starts again, and then uh, we'll see what happens with me. Wow! That's every time I, I've uh, wanted to reach out to you, like, oh, Vegas, oh, we're in <laughs> oh, Florida, oh, we're in Chicago, yeah. California, yeah, all yeah. over the place. California's the old stomping ground. Yeah, yeah. San Diego Padres. I saw I'm you. I'm a Padre right. fan. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> baseball guy all the way. All right. Yeah. So yeah, you you were um, you are with Dentsply now. How did you get involved with the dental industry? With the dental industry as a whole. As a whole. Okay. So, long story. Uh, not that long. I um I worked at Safeway, which is a grocery store, and I was a clerk there, and. Um, you don't really go anywhere unless you get into management. Management wasn't my style with the grocery store. So I was talking to my wife. She worked as an assistant in you know, oral surgery office. And I said, well, you know, what is your friend Lily? What is, what is her husband doing? She says, oh, he's a dental technician. I said, oh, what the heck? What's, what's a dental technician? She says, well, they, they make the teeth for the dentist. I said, I thought the dentist made the teeth. And she goes, no, 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 he makes the teeth. So, so I love to work with my hands. Um, I like to be my own boss. I like to have a little bit of freedom. I went and I sat with him for a day, watched what he did, and I kind of got excited. Man, I want to get into this. So I went to uh, what's called Dental Technology Institute, DTI in Orange, in the city of Orange in uh, California. Um, and I went through their program and I graduated and uh, I got my first job in Halloween, uh, October 31st. Yeah. and. Um, so now I celebrate every October 31st, not only Halloween, it's my, also my anniversary. So I got into it that way. I started out as a driver and a, a plaster dude, you know, and, and uh, uh, within three years I worked my way up into a manager. And, um, and two years later, a partner and I bought uh, one of this, this uh, owner's labs. He had a couple of labs. We bought one of them. We became partners for about five years. We split. I started in the garage. Everybody's in the garage at one time, at one time or another. And um, then I got a call from a, one of my accounts. He says he wants me to be in-house. So we made a deal. If I can be in-house and still have a lab, let's do it. 18 years in-house with him. Moved to North Carolina and um, just brought my business with me. And ever since I, I got in with Dentsply Serona, things have just gotten better and better and better each year. Wow. So, at the time, it was just Serona. with was Serona products, and then they merged. Dentsply and Serona merged later on. Right, right, so. right. Wow, so you, you didn't, again, another story of an individual who was not in dental, you stumble upon mm -hmm. this industry, you mm -hmm. love it, fall in love with it, and make it your passion, mm -hmm. now you're even speaking for Dense Fleischer on your right. advisor for them. Wow, that's amazing. I made it my passion in the digital world. It was a good job, I, um, I, I, I had fun doing it, um, but I have, my kids always come first. So I was, I was very proud of that, that I was the dad, that I showed up for everything. And I coached baseball, I coached high school baseball, I coached all of my kids through any sport, any of their softball or baseball sports. So I was very proud of that, that I could go in at any time to do my work, get off for my kids, and if I needed to go back, I would go back and finish up, which happened quite a bit. So I, I thank my wife for that, because she put up with a lot through the coaching and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it, but it, there was a time when I was done. I was I was done with with dental technology because it was laborious, it was intense, it was hard. And when I got into the digital aspect, that's when I started having more fun than I've ever had. And now the kids are grown up and out of the house. I can do my thing. I can travel. I can do these you know certain things. 
makes it a lot of fun. A lot pretty of good fun. Good gig. It sounds to me like it's a yeah. pretty good gig. Very good. Very good. Wow. So again, you you, you get into dental technology. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, you like to work with your hands, and uh, you, you start working here with a lab. You pick up uh, and you start your own lab. Then you go into working with a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, what was your, what has been your experience in the 17, 17 years, 19 years? Um, how long I've been a tech, or in, at a lab? At I'm, in house, in house. In house, I was in house with him for eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yeah. Wow. So, the progression that you've seen in technology between the first day you started and now. What's that been like? Uh, I'll give you a great example. When I used to come, I, I, I made a couple of trips to Chicago in my younger years, but they have the same M LMT in uh, California. And I would go to that and go to that. Um, and it was almost like, hey, what color wax you got this year? You know, there's not much out there. Now, it's like, you can't miss these shows. If it's not a printer, if it's not CAD CAM, if it's a, a new, you know, um, um, printing material, it, there's, there's something every single year. You have to show up, you have to be in the know now. It's not what color wax do you have this year, it's what are you offering this year. It's totally different, totally different. Wow, totally different, and how has the workflow changed for you? Oh, dramatically. I mean, gee, many Crick, it's, uh, you, you used to take me 60 hours to do 40 units, and now I can do 30 in a day. You know, and I just sit there and I can design all day. We can mill them out. The next day they're ready to stain and glaze if we're doing monolithic. If we're doing cutbacks, a little bit more time. I put my effort into that. Um, but, it, you know, you can get so much more done with so much less time. Um, and so about three and a half years ago, I hired my son, who is a marketing guy. Um, and he, um, he actually worked for the, for the San Diego Padres, our, our, our home team, right? And um, so I took him away from the marketing department because he wanted to be near family. Everybody's having, you know, I have six grandchildren now, um, working on seven, seven comes in May. Um, and so he wanted the cousins to be together and he wanted to be with family. So he moved out here and I stole him away from the Padres. And we have uh, grown threefold for three years in a row. Wow. 19% um, increase last year and we're already on pace to do a 20 plus increase this year. Wow. So um, he's excellent at what he does. We are excellent at what we do. Um, and I think we have some great connections because we take care of our doctors. So. I think it's been working out really well. When did you get involved or get started into making your transition into digital? Uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, I had, a, I had a, a rep, his name was Remo, he got me started in this. Um, so he took me, he actually came in to see the doctor. And the doctor came to me in, in, when I was in-house. He says, Bill, they got this great new machine. I can make my own crowns and stuff. And so my first thought is, ah, oh, crap. You know, everybody's first thought is, ah, oh, crap. And I'm not going to be able to do your work anymore. It doesn't work out that way when you, when you really get into it. So he says, Bill, I want you to go with me because they have um, uh, an in-lab system for dental labs. And I want you to look at that when I look at the, the it was the red cam back then. And I said, OK, I'll go. I kind of regret you. All right, I'll go with you. And um, I fell in love. I went home that night and told my wife, I have to have this. She goes, how much is it? That's the first. It's always, how much is it? <laughs> It was kind of expensive, okay. But I got into it, but I found out quickly that just because you buy the stuff doesn't mean you're gonna be successful. Because I thought, oh, I'm gonna buy this, and people are gonna say, hey, Bill does that now. I can go there and go digital. Well, no, you have to market yourself. You still have to get out there. You still have to, to get the word out of, uh, of what you do. So, I, you know, I was able, I had it there for a few years. I was able to take that. Once I built a base of doctors and stuff, I was able to bring that to North Carolina because you can work anywhere in the world and still work with your Sarah doctors. Okay, so I was able to move that to North Carolina and um, all my kids have moved out and so we have everybody out here in North Carolina and wow. very, very blessed with that, very wow. blessed. So at first you were standoffish because you felt what everybody else felt. You were thinking what everybody mm -hmm. else was thinking. Yep. What was the point? I know that you said that you fell in love with the Remo. Machine. Remo was the point. He was the point. Yes. What did he, he say he, or what did he do? What did he show you? I, I just said I just I had I had I went to lunch with him and he's the he's the Patterson rep in San Diego. And I went to lunch with Remo and said, Look at Remo, I need to 
do this. I need to do better at this. I'm Because I was kind of a shy guy, you know, at the end of the party, you're waiting for your wife in the corner and she's doing the goodbye tour. That's me. I'm in the corner, right? I, I'm much better now and Serona, uh, Dance by Serona has brought that out in me, having to speak and lecture and stuff. So, but I was always that guy and I finally went to Remo, what do I got to do? And he gave me some of the best tips I've ever had. And um, so when I moved to North Carolina, I started on those tips. I got involved with the, the local Patterson group. I got involved with the, the local study clubs. All this, I, I, I made, um, first thing I did was make a, uh, about a dozen, I had a dozen different models and I put the same tooth on each model and, and I gave them to all of the, and they were, they were printed models with teeth that I had done on them. I gave it to every single Patterson rep and said, I don't know if you want to use this, but here's what digital looks like when you go in to sell something. And so I started out that way. So I started making friends with the, the reps. They started understanding that I'm a resource now. I, I study, I learn, I know what's going on in this field. And um, I, I don't want to uh, say too much, but I almost felt like North Carolina was like five years behind San Diego. So I was kind of starting at that beginning point. So I was doing all these tips that Rima was giving me and it really started to help. And then of course bringing my son in and teaching him the business and you know, he's just, uh, he could sell ice to an Eskimo type of guy. Wow, wow, so it was, it was the contact with a, with a representative that knew exactly what he was talking about. Yep. That changed the course of Bill Atkins in his Absolutely. career. Absolutely. I give Remo all the credit. You put me in the right direction. So when dental technicians are ordering online and they're mm -hmm. doing this online, of course there are certain companies that have reps. There's some people that don't like dealing with a sales representative because they feel like, oh, I'm just being sold. Right. What would you tell them? It's a very good question. Um, I don't. You kind of got to get to know people. You got to get to know the companies. You got to know who you want to work with and what you're working with. Um, a, a great example is uh, uh, my Atlantis rep, uh, Calvin. He'd come out. He'd come by all the time. Bill, how you doing? I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, Atlantis. And then finally, it was just like he sh he just showed me something. He just kind of became a friend. It came in, hey, Calvin, how you doing? And and then we start talking. You know, so. You, yeah, you're guarded, but you gotta at some point you gotta kind of give in and see if this is for you or is it not. If it's not for you, just to hey, you know, dude, I'm just not interested. You're wasting your time, or you invite him in and you start having a um, relationship. So I, I feel that all of all of my reps or all of my doctors, their relationships. They're not accounts or this or their reps they're there. They are relationships. That's the way we run our lab. Um, everybody has my cell number. You know, every doctor that I have uh, has a cell. Everybody knew I was here in Chicago and I'm, I'm doing all my work remotely, right? I'm, I'm designing cases while I'm here. And everybody knew that. And yet, you know, I got a couple of phone calls, but it's fine. That's what I want. I want to make sure that they can get a hold of me and they can ask me what they need to at any point, any time. The communication. Communication, Absolutely. communication, Absolutely. communication. I keep on hearing this. Mm -hmm. Why is it then that not every dental technician can get to that place where they can hone their confidence or let's just say their craft to the point where they can have these types of relationships with the doctor? There's this has always been a stigma in the dental technology as I was going through in my younger years. Everybody, it, most dental technicians, and I, I don't want to say this negatively, but they are introverts. They, they, like to, they like to work their hands, they like to be indoors and do what they're doing. I, I, I was the same way when I first started. Um, but at some point you have to find the courage to get out and actually do stuff. So a lot of people let their work talk for them, but the work doesn't say anything. You know, it doesn't speak. It, it, you can look at it and say this is beautiful, but it doesn't speak for you. And you have to find the courage or, or something to get out there and just start talking. You know, just start. And what do you want to do? Do you want to remain just a guy that has two or three accounts? You're good doing what you're doing and you go home at night and you feel good? Or do you want to expand? Do you want to get into digital? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You know, start printing, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's the decision I made. And after I hired my son, um, I found out I was doing it all wrong. <laughs> you know, because in the old days, you call a doctor, you call his office, can I speak to the doctor? No, he's busy, can you leave him a message? And I was doing that, and he looks at me and he says, Dad, he says, 
well, he goes, why don't you text him? You got their number. I said, yeah. He goes, text him. I don't know, I'm not going to text the doctors. He, they gave you their number. Text them. So now I text my doctors, and I swear, I picture them going, they're in the middle of somebody's mouth, they go, oh, excuse me. And then they go back to a mouth. And I get it all the time. I get almost immediate responses when I text a doctor. Or sometimes an assistant. You know, somebody's going to get back to me immediately. So just the communication is totally different. You know, um, you don't use your phone to be your phone. You use your phone to text and other things now. So the communication is a lot easier. It's a lot better. Younger doctors, younger millennial doctors, they understand that. And my son is a millennial, so he understands that, that thought process. And so he's teaching me that part of it, and I'm trying to teach him that some of the old school stuff is still valuable. <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I believe it's, it's a marriage of the, the foundations and the principles and, and the wisdom that has been passed down with the methodology. Mm -hmm. That is being Absolutely. effective nowadays. Absolutely. That's amazing. Wow, what, 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 what a phenomenal perspective there. Again, like I said, I continue to hear the communication. 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 Over and over, over, and over, over, and over. And over again. That, uh, that has brought forth the level of success uh, the people that are the professionals are on the Dental Today podcast. Now, um, your journey has gone from you know starting as just looking at what this gentleman was doing, then you started driving, then you started getting into it, then you now your your business is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. But you're also teaching, and you're also mm -hmm. advising, you're also traveling. How do you balance that? You did mention that you're still working from from here, from the hotel. When you get Correct. back to your room, you're still. Mm -hmm. But still, there, there, 50, 50 people are pulling you in fifty different directions when you're in the room after you speak. How are you still managing the focus? Well, think about the old days when if you were gone for a couple of days or if I took a week vacation, it's like, give me an extra week to do your work, please. You know, I'm taking a vacation. I'm going to need seven extra working days or five extra working days. Now it's like I don't tell anybody I leave because it's all 95% of what we get in the lab, 95% plus um, is all connect cases. So every, I just go on my computer at the end of the day um, and, and before I go out with the guys that I can't stay out with late anymore. <laughs> but I'll go home, I'll go back to the room and I'll pull up my connect cases and I will sit there and I'll design and I'll get stuff out and uh, my son's back and he's doing all the milling and getting everything finished ready to go out. Um, but as far as the traveling and stuff like that, it, it does take a little bit of toll sometimes, but we've hired Kevin. I know you've interviewed Kevin Reck before. Um, Kevin's an outstanding technician, and so I put my, my trust in him that when I'm gone, if he's not with me, uh, he's doing what I'm doing because that's the way we, we work. We have a lot of protocols in the lab. How to, we, we want to keep a certain standard. And if somebody has to take over my job or somebody's got to take over Jesus's job or Kevin's job, there's protocols. This is the way we do it so you get the same result each and every time. And so, and that's, that's important because a lot of guys will go into business and they're working, nobody can do what I do. You know, it's my touch. Well, I have a touch, everybody's got a touch. But there's a protocol to get to where you need that touch. And if you can teach somebody how to do that also, then you're, then you're in good shape. So, so we're talking about system optimization. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely making sure that, that there is a system in place. Mm -hmm. It's not just, mm -hmm. and let's just call it And these. it's ever changing too, because it's it's not static, it's ever changing. You know, you're not, you, you're gonna find, hey, this works a lot better. Let's change protocols, we're gonna do it this way now. You know, we've already, we started our protocols last year, we've already changed them three times. Wow, wow. So, and, and, and when, when we get into this conversation now, we just, uh, brings me to consider that not only are you dealing with making sure that the patient on the other side has the functionality, the occlusion, the aesthetics that they're looking mm -hmm. for, obviously. You're not only making sure that your doctor is happy and getting everything that he needs in the time frame that they need it. Not only are you looking to make sure that all the employees and everything are being paid and everything is being taken care of, but now you're also in the whole dynamic of making sure that your business continues to evolve. Correct. So again, I'm not going to be I around back, forever. I go back to that same question, Bill. How do you balance all these different elements that are obviously 
uh, that are obviously more than necessary. They're mm -hmm. indispensable mm -hmm. in the formula that you have come up with for your success. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give credit to my wife because she's my greatest sounding board. And she's probably the smartest woman I've ever met. And she doesn't even know it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hi, man. <laughs> but um, my wife is excellent. Um, she's been an excellent mother, and uh, I just follow her lead. I do that a lot, and I've learned a lot from her. And um, But I've also heard, learned a lot from uh, mentors of me, um, people that I look up to, that um, uh, Norbert Ulmer, from, uh, formerly from uh, Death by Serona, um, great influence. Um, turned me on to a book um, on one of the, one of the marketing summits that has helped me tremendously. And um, so there are people out there, wife number one, you know, and then we have other people that have influenced me on how to do this and, and which way I should be going and how it should be done. So it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it, it sounds to me that in order for, for success to come in, surrounding yourself, number one, with the ideal partner. Absolutely. Has been. Absolutely. Not only in 37 years. 37. And I got, if I got that number wrong, I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I think it's 37. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Bill. Thank you. What has been your secret to the success in marriage? Uh, I just, uh, it's my wife. I mean, if you ask any of my kids, uh, they don't come to me for advice. They come to my wife. My wife knows the advice. They come to me when they need something, you know, physically done. Dad, can you help me do this or that? But when they need uh, life advice, they go to my wife. And um, I do the same thing. And she puts up with me, and I love her, and um, I think that's that's the key right there. That that starts everything. You know, if you're if you're into your wife and your family, and and everything goes there, then whatever you do for them is is an absolute joy. So um, when I when I do this this traveling and stuff, and I know that I've got a little bit more freedom, and that I I can uh, go home and see my family, that makes it all worthwhile. Wow. Because it definitely sounds to me like it's it's not that simple. There's a lot of facets. There's a lot to, yeah. to what what it is that mm -hmm. you do and, and the success that a calendar helps too. Oh. <laughs> a calendar definitely yeah. helps. But um, and, and so when and and I know I'm going deep into a few things here, but do you have a day in the week that you sit down and you formulate your strategy for the next three months, the next six months? Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon yeah. is, is your... Why yeah. Monday afternoon? Um, we have a, a part-time admin. Uh, she's gone on Monday afternoons. Kevin is not. A, Kevin's day off is Monday. It's Jesus and I. Uh, it's my son. He's my partner, my business partner. Also, we sit down and we strategize. So at the beginning of the year, I had a list of things. Here's what we're looking to hit. Um, he looks it over. He says, "Here's what I'm thinking of." We have a what's called a little uh, triangle. Um, it's got ten uh, points on it, and it's a, it's like a it's a funnel actually. So the top line is what we're most looking to improve on down to like we have 10 different things and uh, we put that funnel up everywhere in the lab so everybody can see it and um, so it's, it's Monday afternoon so we'll sit down to that. So now we're getting into another conversation that, that you, it's not only yourself and your, and your son but it's uh, you, you've established, you've developed and established and enforced a culture. A what now? What it is, a culture. Oh yes, yes. For what it yeah. is that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What point in time did you realize that this was going to be important, establishing culture? Um, part of it, uh, most of it was when Jesus came on board with me. Um, uh, through his marketing efforts and through his studies uh, and everything, he started teaching me this. Then the book I was telling you about is called The E-Myth uh, that Norbert turned me on to and, and Norbert's ability to develop a family within the in-lab system. Um, you take notice of all that stuff. It's very important. It's, and I've always, I've always been that family guy. I've always been the guy who wants to take care of my accounts. Um, but there's, there's a way to do it to where you can make everybody happy and you can make your employees happy. Because I don't mind paying my employees if they stay with me. So my, my, whole, uh, my whole thing is treat them like you, like you want to be treated. Pay them so they stay. You know, and, and, and get them involved and cross train, do all that stuff. So, you know, a lot of people are afraid of cross training because their employees are going to leave and open a lab. I'm, I hope that I do it 
the correct way to where they're going to want to stay and work with me. That, that is my hope. I mean, I can't stop anybody from doing anything, but the way we're doing it, I, I hope that they, they want to stay. And absolutely, when, when, when I hear you I'm mentioning mentors, I'm mentioning a lot of influences, what better environment to stay in than an environment where there is constant evolution. Absolutely. And constant growth. Absolutely. And constant, uh, a, con a culture of constant growth, which mm -hmm. I believe is fantastic. So where can we see you next, Bill? Where are you going to be next? I'm going to be home. <laughs> for the next month of well, March, you said. The right? only, uh, yeah, for an entire March. Uh, the only thing I have set up right now is, is DS World in October. Um, if things come up through the year, um, but I'll be in DS World in October, and um, hopefully we'll have a booth out there. We're kind of edging towards that, but we'll see. We're, we're working on this it. This is going to be where? Uh, Vegas. In Vegas again. Vegas. Yes, yes. Vegas in October. What date again? It's the first weekend in October. I'm not first sure. Set third and fourth or second and third or something like that. Oh, okay. I have, I have to look at my calendar. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, fantastic. Is there, are there any resources where uh, where our followers can begin to follow you, get your expert uh, yeah. uh, perspective on certain things? They, they can follow me personally on Facebook, at Bill Atkison. Um, my name is spelled weird, A-T-K-I-S-S-I-O-N, so you have to look for that. Um, they can follow us uh, uh, on the, um, we have Bella Vita Dental Designs on Facebook, and we also have at Bella Vita Dental Designs on Instagram, and we're even on Twitter, we don't Twitter a lot, tweet a lot, what do you call it, yeah. but um, we are on Twitter also, so yeah. The social media has been uh, a huge, huge boon uh, for our company. Um, we, we get a lot of communication. There's a doctor here in McCormick and he saw that I was here through Facebook and he texted me yesterday, let's get together. I love that, see? That's the communication, that's taking care of your doctors, that's becoming friends with people you like that also do work with you. And, and that to me is extremely important. That is powerful. So. We're looking forward to seeing you there in October, hopefully sooner than that as well. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and sharing sure. your experience, where you come from. We're looking forward to continuing your success and learning from your success. Bill, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. We appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time.